Hello everyone, Dr. Kimball here. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about cervical fusion versus cervical disc replacement. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about just some of the, the difference between the two. When you might choose one, well, when you, you and your provider might choose one versus the other. Um, what the pr differences are in the procedure. Uh, how the recovery differs. Even some about cost and how that relates to the type of procedure that you have. And then finally, what is the last one? Recovery. And finally, I'm gonna to talk to you about how the recovery differs, okay? So, uh, first of all, when should you have a fusion versus a disc replacement? Uh, if you talk to different providers, they're gonna tell you different things. Sometimes it's gonna be more what they're comfortable doing or what they're familiar doing. So you'll wanna make sure that your provider has done or is capable of doing both procedures. If you don't know if they do a lot of disc replacement surgery, uh, you might want to ask other patients or try to get some other information about whether or not that provider does that procedure and not just is capable of doing it, but does it on the regular. And so you want to make sure that they're actually thinking about it and have the skill set to do it and have been trained on it properly. Cervical fusion is indicated when a patient has a condition in the spine that requires decompression of the nerve roots or spinal cord and has an, uh, an amount of degeneration or deformity to, to the spine that requires the surgeon to remove the disc and replace it with a bone graft and a spacer and possibly some kind of plate. The goal of that procedure is to take out motion, to remove motion and to reconstruct the spine. The goal of disc replacement surgery is not to remove motion. It is to unlock motion or maintain motion and at the same time perform those same goals of decompress the spinal cord and or nerve roots. One of the advantages to disc replacement is that it doesn't cause the same stress on the adjacent levels in the spine and that is one of the biggest, biggest upsides to uh, considering it. So uh, how does the procedure differ? Well, really the approach to the spine is very, very similar. Um, because I'm right-handed, I come from the right side of the neck. You can have a surgeon that might come from the left side of the neck. Traditionally, neurosurgeons come from the right. Orthopedic spine surgeons come from the left. I won't get into why. Sometimes it's because um, that's just how they were trained. Um, there's really not a right or a wrong side to come from. Uh, the approach involves coming through, obviously, the skin, and then there's a tiny, tiny muscle under the skin called the platysma. That's really the only muscle that we end up cutting when we get um, in our pathway to the spine. The other muscles, we kind of just dissect around and move down toward the spine. There's some uh, retractors that we use to hold soft tissue out of the way. Some of those soft tissues include blood vessels like the carotid artery. Uh, others include the esophagus. Those are probably the two main important structures, anatomical structures that your surgeon is aware of and needs to protect uh, during the procedure. So typically we'll dissect down to the spine and that may take uh, anywhere between three and 10 minutes, depending upon the thickness of your neck, whether you've had prior spine surgery and a variety of other factors. After we've dissected down to the spine, We'll place a retractor system to protect those soft tissues, and then we'll expose the front of the spine. One difference between these two procedures is that with disc replacement, you have to have a little bit more exposure of the spine from the front. Um, we also have to have a more uh, direct view of the spine because that disc replacement, it's really important that it comes in dead center on the spine and that we get a symmetric release of the ligaments on both sides of the spine. That's not as critical in fusion. The graft doesn't have to be coming dead center down the middle. It doesn't have to be um, right in the middle. You can still get good fusion of the bone, even if you don't have the perfect trajectory. And even the plate, although we like to see it right in the middle, it doesn't have to be dead center. So you can still good, get good fusion of the bone um, with those two different, uh, um, excuse me, without having the same, same exposure. Uh, when you're doing disc replacement, we need to be more respectful of the bone and the bone quality and the end plate of the vertebrae. We don't want to violate that because uh, we don't want to weaken it. The disc replacement requires more uh, rigid or more robust bone quality than fusion does, 
And one way that we make sure to preserve that is to uh, respect the bone and, and, and just shave off the cartilage but leave the bone intact. And, and that requires a little bit more technical nuance. The last thing that I would say technically about the procedure that's a little bit different with this replacement, your surgeon has to be um, very skilled and very capable of decompressing the nerve roots when doing a disc replacement, even more so than when doing a fusion. Because when motion is preserved, we don't get the benefit of uh, having a, a fusion where we take away motion that can actually um, help the nerves not be so irritated if they are being pinched. So your surgeon just needs to, knew, needs to know that he needs to do a better job of decompressing the nerve when he's doing a de uh, disc replacement versus a fusion. Sometimes the surgeon may not feel that that's possible and that might be a reason why he feels a fusion is necessary and that may very well be the right procedure done for you. Everyone's different, everyone's spine is different. Although sometimes I compare the spine or the body to a car, it's not the same. It is different in many respects and every case is unique. So cost, one thing that you might find that is interesting about cost, there are really different costs to different procedures. You have hospitals, they charge or the surgery center will charge a, uh, an amount for the procedure for facilitating the site of the procedure. You have cost of the implants and then you have the surgeon's fee, you have the anesthesiologist fee. Overall, the cost of a fusion surgery is higher than the cost of a disc replacement. I will tell you that the hardware for a disc replacement is a bit more expensive, not tremendously, but a little bit more expensive than the cost for the fusion hardware. Surprisingly, the surgeon's fee is lower for the disc replacement surgery in most cases compared to fusion. Some people have said that that's one of the reasons why some surgeons prefer not to offer disc replacement because they're going to make less money. I don't know that that's true. I think that that might be an, an older mentality um, and one of the reasons why older surgeons don't really see the upside to offering disc replacement to, to patients. Of course, you've listened to me long enough, you know that I'm very passionate about disc replacement. I just wanna do what's right for patients. I just wanna do for them what I would want for myself. Next of all, uh, recovery phase uh, after surgery. What is the difference between fusion versus disc replacement? You could watch some of my recovery uh, or post-operative recommendation videos to kind of get a little, little more grasp on it in detail. But what I, will, what I will tell you is that typically after a fusion surgery, our goal is to immobilize the neck for a bit longer than in disc replacement. Sometimes in my practice, that can be four to six weeks in a collar. Disc replacement surgery, you'll know that uh, I will take people out of the collar almost immediately. I have them wear a collar for a short period of time really just to stabilize the neck, provide a little bit of extra support in the time where you know, you're just readjusting to the new position of your spine and your new disc. But the motion of the neck, the, the motion across the disc is actually vital and important to the process of that bone healing into, um, into the disc end plate. When you have a, a, a knee replacement, if you've ever had a knee replacement, you'll know that they start moving the knee pretty much immediately. So when they fuse things in the spine, we try to eliminate motion because that's we don't want motion to happen. We want the bone to heal. The problem with, uh, with trying to decide how long you need to immobilize the spine after fusion is that the fusion can take not six weeks, minimum it's gonna take three to four months. No one would ever recommend immobilizing your spine more than three months because the other problems that you can have from immobilizing the spine in a, in a a brace are that you start to get significant muscle atrophy. Do you remember when you were a kid and you broke your arm and you had a cast and you took it off and your arm was totally puny and thin when you took the cast off? The exact same thing happens to your neck when you take a collar off the muscles. You know, they atrophy, you feel like your neck is like a noodle. So you, you can't just take it off and, and, and stop wearing it immediately. You kind of have to wean out of the collar. So that's another process. You don't just take the collar right off. When I do disc replacement surgery, I tell my patients, listen, wear the collar, take it off every four to five hours. I want you putting your neck through some just gentle, non, you know, um, forced range of motion. And, and I, I do find that that helps with the recovery significantly. Um, so leave it going. Did I have one more topic that I need to discuss? It was out, well, recovery cost or uh, outcome. outcome. Okay, the last topic that I'm gonna talk to you about 
related to these two different types of procedures is outcomes. So what's the difference? Well, if you ask me, the outcomes after disc replacement can be much, much better than after fusion. The primary reason is your motion uh, typically is, is much improved, is maintained, and uh, the risk of having to have another surgery is about seven times less likely after a, a multi-level disc replacement in the neck compared to a multi-level fusion in the neck. And there's real good scientific data to demonstrate that. So long-term, the outcome that you may be thinking about is, is, is my pain gone? But you really need to be thinking longer than that. You need to be thinking longer than one year, two years from now. You need to be thinking, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, what is my long-term outcome? It's hard for doctors of science to, to follow those outcomes, but the best case scenario is you have this fixed and you never have to come back to your spine surgeon again. That's the best case scenario. That's the best outcome for you. And I think that between these two therapies, again, there are many, many indications where fusion is the right procedure, but when, if possible, disc replacement, I think should always be considered. So I hope you'll find a surgeon out there that is, is as passionate about disc replacement as I am, that they can offer you these techniques and at least walk you through whether or not it's a consideration for you so that you know that you're having all your options considered.